Hello everybody, my name is Isaiah and today I wanted to talk a bit about Tall Hot Blonde which is a documentary which was recommended to me by Andrew Burkett and before you go on in this video I recommend that you go home and watch it. It's a really good documentary and if you're a lawnographer I can't see you disliking this documentary. Um, because being a lawnographer, you're obsessed with predators, chat logs. This is all that in a documentary. So go watch it and most likely you will enjoy it. Um, so from now on, spoilers. Tom Montgomery, he's what? He's a 46-year-old married man. He had two kids. Um, you know, they weren't the most stable family. Economically, they were struggling, struggling, I believe, but they weren't going to die or starve or anything. They were, they were going okay. Um, the relationship was a bit rocky, and before I continue, I just want to say that I'm going to base most of my facts off the documentary because you know that's all I've got to go with. And I do know cinematography likes to exaggerate certain scenarios and this and that and. Maybe they may have made the relationship more rocky than it actually was, but I'm just going to go with the documentary. And um, he had high aspirations, Tom. He wanted to, well, he was in the Marines. He wanted to be a sniper. And unfortunately, he was injured and he never achieved what he wanted. And you can see in the documentary that Tom, Tom's jealous of Brian. From the start, when they're playing poker, Brian's talking about, you know, one night stands, going out all the time, having no responsibility. That's what Tom Montgomery wants. But even though you're jealous of someone, you don't just go out and kill them. And that's the interesting factor in this movie, seeing the transition and mutation of a sane person into an insane person. And look, I don't know whether Tom was a sociopath to begin with and he had it in him all along, but from what I gathered, he seemed like a pretty ordinary guy and he just became so infatuated by the internet and he just couldn't deal with his newfound, you know, obsession. It was like an addiction, like smoking. He just couldn't shake it and it completely manipulated him. The mind can be manipulated easily and look, he'd never been exposed to the idea of, you know, fake personas and people lying online. And that's the most ironic thing about the movie is that he believes Tall Hot Blonde is a Tall Hot Blonde. And even though he's lying to her about his own identity, he's like, oh no, no, she has to be a Tall Hot Blonde. She says, yeah, I am. That's it. He accepts it. So that's one of the weirdest things about it. And whenever we talk about predators all the time, like how can you trust this predator? How can the predator trust the decoy? How can Lorne believe Kayla was a girl with only a few pictures? Um, it happens. We've seen it in To Catch a Predator. Lorne Armstrong is living proof that people like Tom Montgomery exist and him exist. They're people that believe straight away that someone online is who they say. And Lorne didn't lie, okay? Lorne was someone who who just, you know, he told the truth. He even said he didn't have a bed to Kayla. But here you see Tom lied. So it's completely different to Lorne. He said he was an 18-year-old Marine, um, tall hot blonde, as we know, is the mother of Jess. I believe her real name is, the mother of Jesse, um, and she was lying that she was actually her daughter. And so the conversation begins. Interestingly enough, some, some similarities with Lorne here. You've got him at Balding Man, 46, so 10 years older than Lorne, but he had two daughters and a family, and like having an affair isn't uncommon. It, it does happen, but killing someone is one of the most selfish acts you could do because your whole family's lives are ruined. And he says specifically, 
um, at the start of the movie that I will never leave you girls. I will always be here for you. And what does he do? He goes and kills someone and gets sent to jail for, I believe, I read somewhere 20... Montgomery was sentenced to 20 years in jail in a plea deal for Barrett's murder. So 20 years. He's not going to get out to um, 20, 26. So another, yeah, another about nine years. He's still in there for. So a very, very selfish act. And, you know, I actually got a bit emotional because I feel that through doing this murder... And when fucking Tom finally took his family out on the camping trip, spent some time with his wife, didn't think about tall, hot blonde, he was enjoying life. Like, he was stressed about, you know, being convicted of a murder, um, ruining his wife and children's lives, ruining his own reputation. He was stressed about that, but he was still savouring and enjoying the camping trip with his family. And that's one of the most amazing things to me because he had happiness all along he just forgot and why you forget I think it's just the need for change like he'd been in a relationship I think for 18 years nearly two decades with his wife he just wanted some change he was sick of the mundane day-to-day tasks of cutting what iron up or some shit welding or whatever it was he was meant to be a marine sniper but he got injured, and he never reached those aspirations. Got some of the chat log here. On Friday or Sat, you can say goodbye forever to me and Tommy. Why? We are leaving for good. Now, this is the most interesting thing here, because Tom develops some sort of split personality, I believe, and it's completely gobsmacking to me, because... He seems like a pretty average guy at the start. And I mean, the documentary portrays him as average. He may have been a fucking weirdo for all we know, but he develops a split personality and it's just, he's referring to it constantly with her, even though she knows to what blonde that he's actually Tom Montgomery, that 46 year old man, not Tommy, the 18 year old Marine sniper. But he still says, Say goodbye to me and Tommy. Why? We are leaving for good. Now, is he talking about suicide here? He, I think this is the moment where he chucks his laptop into the water and he wants to get away from it. Um, which is the best advice you could get. I mean, Lorne came up with it. i got to get advice. i got to get off the internet. Lorne knew it. Um, and I think Marine Sniper knew that The only way he can get off the internet is by throwing his laptop into the water, which is what he did. No. Yes, Jesse, you are having fun in your life now, so it's time for us to leave. Again, referring him to two entities, two beings, Tommy and Tom. Very, very odd. I would love to see the entire chat log here. You've got someone who's developed a split personality disorder through an infatuation with a woman online. It's completely interesting. No, Tom. Don't take Tommy. And here she's saying, I like Tommy. So they may have been role-playing because she says, no, Tom here, and then says, don't take Tommy. So she wants Tom to keep role-playing and keep pretending to be Tommy. But look, it's completely odd, very strange. He's going with me. You placed him with Timmy. I don't know what Timmy is, um, because she says down here, Brian, um, where is it? Look, he says, I wish I had a perfect life like you and Brian do. So I don't know who Timmy is. You replaced him with Timmy. Must just be a, um, mistype, mistype, and he meant Tommy. Please don't say that. It's not true. According to the text I got, it is. No, it isn't. So it's time for Tommy to be put to rest. I will leave. I wish I had a perfect life like you and Brian do. And there it is again. Tom Montgomery was jealous of Brian from the get-go. You could see in that poker room that Tom was saying, you know, 
um, I've only got one night a month to go out and play poker. Like, he was dreading life. But Brian, on the other hand, you know, he was having one-night stands, he was having parties, no responsibilities. He had a future. He was going to college. Um, he had everything Tom Montgomery wanted. So there was already that jealousy at the start of the film and the start of this altercation. And it had been building up and building up. And I believe Tom was the same person at the start. Tom wouldn't have hurt Brian. But through this chat log, it completely warped his mind. And I would love to know a bit more about Tom and what he went through and what the chat log shows. Um, what does Brian have to do with this? You're not going to forgive this one. He left a few copies of your conversation on my toolbox today. Half the company knows now. See, now that's a dick move by Brian. And this just fueled the fire and... Tom got mad. It doesn't give you a right to kill someone, but Tom was angry. You know, Brian took the girl he loved. He was ridiculing him. He was mad. Knows what? What you two talked about. No, Tom. How you told him I'm a fucking loser and a predator. Now, he's not a predator. She's 18. That is frowned upon. But 18, I believe, is a legal age. So... He's not necessarily a predator, but again, like 18 and 46 is a bit, you know, strange. And, you know, chatting online and pretending to be someone else is a loser act. Come on. One of the most interesting moments in the film was actually when he proposed in that phone call. Um, I didn't know what his game plan was. He... He had these ideas of meeting her and, you know, marrying her. And I just couldn't feel or see any hesitation in the fact that it wasn't him. Um, it might have only just hit him, like the day before he would actually go and meet this person. That he's not, in fact, 18. He was just so manipulated and so warped. And it was a year-long chat before his wife found out. I often do wonder, too, if Tom did go and meet her, and, you know, it was the mum, and she was an older lady, maybe they would have gotten together, the older lady and Tom, and maybe they would have had a relationship or an affair, and Brian's life would have been savoured. Um, but I think the mum would have, the mum was definitely looking for a younger guy. I don't think she would have been satisfied with the 46-year-old Tom. And I don't think Tom would have been satisfied with her either. Now, it would have been interesting when Tom saw the daughter. He would have maybe hugged her. He would have tried to approach her. And the daughter would have been like, who the fuck are you? I don't even know you. Um, so that would have been very, very interesting. I do believe they exchanged addresses because the wife sent tall hot blonde a letter and don't forget a care package was sent to Tom's home so they knew each other's addresses that's very risky um and poor play by tall hot blonde who is the mum in my opinion because she's giving out information of her household that her daughter lives in to a complete stranger she doesn't know he could have by all means come over to the house approached the daughter, Jessie, and said, come with me. And she would have been like, no, I don't know who you are. And he would have maybe gotten aggressive, attacked, raped, murdered her. So, tall up blonde mum was a complete idiot for doing that. It's the one thing, Lawrence even says it, you don't give your address. And already I'm seeing like a bit of parallel here between Lawn and Tom Montgomery because Tom's very aggressive. Tom's very mad. And what is Lorne like every single day? Lorne's mad. Lorne's aggressive. He hates Ramona's doctor friend, who's going to probably be a boyfriend. Can Lorne become a monster like Tom Montgomery? I don't know, but Ramona has to be careful because Lorne is not mentally stable. We all know there's something wrong with the guy. There has to be. And could it lead to something like this? 
he can't definitively say, no, it won't. So, Ramona, be careful. Um, I know your true name. It's been said a couple of times on different videos. I, it starts with T. It's either T or S. I know it's T. So, people know your name, okay, and... I'd just be very, very cautious that Lorne doesn't find that out. I'm not going to say it, but I'd be very cautious that Lorne doesn't find it out and Lorne doesn't get angry and do further digging and find out more information on you. Um, Marine Sniper, I don't have a life. Three hours you two were talking about me. What did you say to him? I didn't. Why not? It's not worth it anymore. I will get out of your life, Tom. I have done too much damage to be undone. I'm so sorry. You made it perfectly clear who you want by your talk with Brian. You will never forgive me. That is up to you, Jesse. I will on Sat. And then it goes on and on um, about forgiveness. Um, I will be alone and I will never feel compassion for another person till I die. He's talking about like how they're breaking up. You could have been honest with me, Jesse, instead of crying on Brian's shoulder. I know. I'm sorry, Tom. It's too late, Jesse. This fucking loser is leaving on Sat. As in, Brian leaving on Saturday to meet her, I believe. Please don't do that. Why do you care? And just on that note, what would have Brian done when he got to the house and saw it was a mum, a 40-year-old mother, who was lying that it was actually the daughter? Like, I'm so confused about the motives of both these people it's odd it's like a fake world they live in but they don't mind if it all comes crashing down in their real world they're more worried about this fake reality that's being created it's so confusing to me and that's why i love it so brian would have approached the house seen katie or sorry jesse the daughter said hey jesse she'd be like who the fuck are you and the mum would have been like, oh, um, it was actually me, Brian. And then he would have been like, oh, this is fucked up. Like, it just doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. But this happened. This fucking happened. Oh, my God. I'm going to become, become a, what would the, tomography? Lornography? Yeah, tomography. This is my new religion. I'm serious. If someone could get this whole chat log, I would praise you. <clears throat> I might do a video one day where I actually do read what's of this chat log. Um, when you begged Brian to stay with you when he told you to leave him alone. Life was so much better when you were my Tommy. So obviously before she found out Tommy was actually Tom, a 46-year-old. Why couldn't you tell me you wanted to be with Brian? I don't want to be with Brian. Tommy's leaving you on Saturday. I don't want to be with anyone but Tommy. Sure, sounded like it. Sorry, sure, sounded like it with what you wrote to him. Tom, please stop. Why does the truth hurt, Jesse? And more and more arguing. Um, according to what you wrote, please don't leave Brian. I didn't write that. It was your name on it. Show me. Jesse. Isn't that your name on your heart? Oh, just more chatting. You know, it's really hard to read a chat log without any context, but <clears throat> you get the gist of it. Tommy and I have been replaced. A very, very odd situation unfolding. And I'll be completely honest, I was a bit sad towards the end of it because you've got a guy who was completely infatuated with a girl I don't know if I already spoke about this, but he threw away his laptop, chucked it in the water, it was destroyed. That was his only way to get rid of it. He could not control himself. He went and spent that final night or day or whatever with his family. He went camping. He was happy. Despite possible convictions coming his way, ruining his wife's life, ruining his two children's life, ruining his reputation ruining Brian's life by killing him, ruining Brian's family's life, doing all this damage, ruining Tohop Blonde's life, he he was still seemed to be able to savour the moment and enjoy the camping trip. And he knew he'd done the wrong thing. He knew he'd fucked up. 
And I think in that moment he realised, not that he fucked up by killing Brian, which was a fuck up, but he fucked up because he had happiness at home all along. He did. He had happiness at home all along. He was smiling with his wife. He had a nice sexual, you know, relationship with her in the tent. Some may argue that, you know, it's his last time he's going to have sex for a while. But I think he also kind of relaxed, enjoyed it. He missed his wife and he he does love his wife. And at the end, when he's getting arrested, <clears throat> he's hugging his kids and saying, I love you. Hugs his wife saying, I love you. He doesn't love them. You cannot destroy a family like he did and say you love them. Killing someone is selfish. It's not only ruining your life, okay, but it's ruining the people's lives around you. His children will never be the same. They're going to be ridiculed probably about this story, maybe not to their face, but behind their back. Um, his wife now has to raise two children with half the income that she was used to having because now Tom's gone to jail. It's, it's a very sad situation. Um, and I just can't believe this transition. He never had contact with the internet before. Maybe if he never did have contact with the internet, everything would have been fine. But he was just someone who was so easily manipulated. And it just comes down to being a beta. He's a complete beta. He, even though he was in the Marines, he would have had to have some strength and integrity and, you know, passion. But through the years, he just became, you know, a beta. He just took orders. From, I know it's his job he has to do, but he just became a submissive person. And that may have played a role in his mutation into this freak um, What else is there to say? I might see if there's anything else to read about. So what have we got here? I'm, I'm really interested in finding any other information on the chat log. There's no other information on the chat log. I might just end it here, guys. Hopefully you found it interesting. Um, apologies if I took a bit of the spotlight off your next video, Andrew, because I know you wanted to talk a bit about it, but I just had to talk about it. It was an amazing documentary. Thanks again for the information on it, and I'll talk to you all soon. Till next time, guys. See ya.